What's going on everybody? In today's video, I wanted to talk about the automobile that I introduced two weeks ago to the channel. Um, I didn't really get a chance to talk about it much, so without further ado, let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that elephant is the 2017 Dodge Challenger RT Scatback. Okay, so unfortunately the wind noise was so bad that day that I was filming that I'm forced to do a voiceover instead, but I think you will appreciate this more because uh, this is going to be much better quality than the camera I was using. So in today's video, I wanted to discuss why I purchased this car, the features I got, the window sticker, and the price that I paid. So this is going to be an action-packed video for those of you car buffs out there. So first off, let's start with the features. If you're not familiar with the Dodge Challenger, there are probably about 15 to 20 different trims that you can get with this car. And it gets kind of complicated and confusing, so let me try to break it down for you. You can get it all based off of the engine size that you purchase. So the V6 engine is a 3.6 liter. It's the SXT, the Dodge Challenger SXT. Um, it's the one that's probably most common. Above that, you start getting into the RT trim level, which is a 5.7 liter V8. Then you get the 6.4 liter V8, which is this particular model. And that one comes in a variety of different names as well. Like you can get the Scat Pack, which is this one. You can also get it in the SRT 392. You can get it in the TA 392. Now all of these names have their own heritage. I'm not gonna explain that, but that's just kind of the different trim levels. Above this, you of course have the Hellcat and the Demon, which are probably the most popular. Uh, if you want more details on the trim levels, I recommend going to the Dodge's website. You can actually get a really good breakdown of that on their website. Uh, this one also has the shaker hood. I'll describe that in a minute. Now the Scat Pack, they're all differentiated using this little Super B emblem on the side. It's a little B that's like a race car. That's how you know that the model is a Scat Pack. Um, now, in terms of the, the shaker hood I was mentioning, that's the giant hole that you see in the middle with the little air intake. Uh, so the shaker hood also has a little bit of background and history to it as well, but it's pretty much just a cold air intake that uh, you know doesn't add too much to horsepower, but looks really cool. I'll describe what that is in a minute. If you're not familiar with the Scat Pack name, that is actually a throwback to the late 60s, early 70s. So the Scat Pack emblem is a little Super B. Uh, that actually kind of is a combination between the car they introduced back in the late 60s, it was the Dodge Super B, and then the Scat Pack, which was pretty much a group of individuals. Uh, it's a, an, a play on words off of the Rat Pack, which included Frank Sinatra. So the Scat Pack was, was uh, kind of like an elite membership, a club uh, for people who owned this type of car and they could pay $3 and it was kind of like a car club. It was just an elite club. You don't really have stuff like that anymore. But the Scat Pack were cars that were probably one of the fastest of Dodge's lineups, so like the, the, the Demon, they're like the SRT Hellcat. I think the requirement was they would have to run a quarter mile in the 14 second range. So that's where the Scat Pack name came from. Dodge brought it back, I believe in 2014 or 15. And uh, that's this particular model. And that's why I like it is because it's a, a throwback to the old days. Uh, the Shaker Hood is actually a throwback as well. So they used to have these big air intakes on these giant engines that were much bigger even than this car that I have right now. Uh, 392 is just a synonym kind of for 6.4 liters, 392 cubic inches. But the Shaker Hood just throws in a lot of air into the engine uh, and more air, of course, uh, you know, more combustion. It's, a, of course, a lot more power. So if you want a more deeper history lesson on the Scat Pack name or the Shaker Hood, you're welcome to look it up online. But I kind of wanted to give you just a quick synopsis of what those names are and the heritage behind them. And a lot of Dodge models have that heritage as well. Uh, I mentioned the TA392. That's also kind of a throwback name as well. But uh, as for the exterior, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Let's hop on into the interior and we can go on the features of that car. So I wanted to start off with talking about why I purchased this vehicle. 
Then I wanna go into the specific features of this vehicle, the window sticker, and then go into the details about what I paid for it. So to start off with why I chose the Dodge Challenger, I kind of have already addressed this pretty extensively in previous videos, specifically my last video, where I, I told you why I was selling my 2013 Mercedes C-Class. Um, I go into the details of why I chose the Dodge Challenger. It's because I've always wanted a muscle car since I was 16, and I always wanted the Dodge Challenger since I saw it at the car show, and so you, know, you put two and two together, and it was about time for me to actually pick up and purchase this car. Now, I don't wanna repeat what I talked about, but I do wanna tell you why I chose this car over its competitors, like the Ford Mustang or the Chevy Camaro. So the reason I chose the Dodge Challenger over those two options is because this car, in my belief, is the most throwback of all the three cars. So I think the Mustang is a beautiful car, I think the Camaro is a great car, but this car is really the most throwback out of all of them. I mean, none of the other ones have a shaker hood, none of them have that same type of front end. Even, I mean, even the interior of this car is more of the you know throwback 70s Challenger than any of the other automobiles, and that's kind of what I wanted. So that's why I chose this car over the others, but there were other reasons as well. Uh, for me personally, I wanted something bigger and much more spacious. The Camaro is, pretty small, it's really tight, there's not much rear leg room, uh, there's no like trunk space, and same with the Mustang. The Mustang is I think a little bit bigger than the Camaro, but this is definitely the biggest out of all of them. I mean, this thing is gigantic on the inside. You know, I can stretch my legs out, no issues. I can seat people in the back. There's actually two vents back there as well, which helps because I sometimes carry people in the back seats. On top of that, the trunk space is huge. I mean, everything in this car is bigger. For those of you that don't know, this actually is based off of, I think the mid 2000s E-Class. So the the wheelbase is based off of that car. So it's about the same size as a, as a you know mid 2000s E-Class, which is bigger than the Mustang or the Camaro. And you know, of course there's other reasons. I think Dodge's marketing team is probably one of the strongest out there. I'm not gonna lie and say that the marketing didn't get to me either. You know, it's in, it's in Fast and the Furious, it's in all these race movies. So, you know, of course, this is not only the most throwback, not only the spacious, but they also make it look like it's the most powerful out of all of them. And you know, horsepower wise, it, it is most likely, but at the end of the day, zero to 60 and, and track time, you're probably about the same in, in either car, maybe even faster in the Camaro, I think. But uh, you know, for that reason, I chose this car, but I think those other two cars are very good automobiles. Um, I, I can't say, I could pick one over the other. I just, at this point in time in my life, I wanted the Challenger, but you know, maybe in six months to a year, I want the Camaro or the Mustang. Again, just my personal preference right now is the Dodge Challenger, but I'm not dissing on any of you Camaro or Mustang fans out there. Now I just wanted to talk about some of the features. So for those of you who haven't guessed, I purchased this car used. So this is a 2017. Uh, I, when I purchased this car, I had about 15,000 miles on it. I'm almost at 16,000, so I've been driving it a lot. The previous owner actually did some add-ons to this car that I really appreciate and I think makes the car pop a little bit more. Um, so first off, what they ended up doing is they applied a really dark tint to the windows. So this isn't even, uh, I think a 20%, this might be a 10 or a 5% tint, I think is the right, uh, the number for it. But uh, it's a pretty dark tint, I really like that. It's almost like a limo tint. People can't really look inside. Um, it's better for heat, it's better for privacy, etc. cetera. Um, it would have been nice just to have that and I'm glad he did do that. The, the next thing that he actually did, the next mod, so to speak, is he added stripes to the front. Um, so he added uh, two cool looking stripes that extend onto the hood uh, and onto the fender as well. So they're kind of two uh, sections of those stripes. And then he added stripes down at the bottom that extend all the way from the front wheel to the rear wheel. And when I first saw this, when it was on the used car market, I thought that maybe that was a feature that was included in the scat pack shaker or something, but no, those are actually aftermarket. And to be honest, I think it fits in really well with the destroyer gray exterior color. You know, the black with the red coloring and the black stripe on the back of the car, I think everything just fits very, very well. And it looks amazing. So I'm really happy he did that because I don't even think I would have thought about doing that or actually went ahead and did it. It looks really professional. He did a very good job with it and I, I couldn't be happier. That was a really cool feature that he did. And the third mod or accessory or feature, you could say that uh, the previous owner added to this vehicle that didn't come stock with the car are the uh, tires of this automobile. They're actually, I think the Scat Pack comes with 245 uh, wide tires. This is 275. So this adds a lot of 
more traction than the stock 245s. That's always the, the biggest downside. If you watch any video about five things I hate about, say, you know, a Dodge Challenger Scat Pack or Charger Scat Pack, it's the width of the tires. And the previous owner upgraded them. They're almost brand new. I think he, he just put a few hundred miles on them. And they're 275 uh, wide tires and uh, they are the 20 inch rims as well and so he did that on the rear and I think the front as well and so that was something I really appreciated that he did because it makes it look meaner and aggressive and I think the tires even stick out a little bit it's, it's really cool so those three mods or accessories whatever you call them that he did were fantastic um, I think I covered everything in that so now I wanted to go over the features of this car specifically because I have the window sticker right here wanted to go over that with you so like I said, this is the 392 Hemi Scat Pack Shaker. It comes with the 6.4 liter 392 Hemi engine. It's the V8, zero to 60 in about 4.5 seconds, you know, give or take. You can you can get it a little bit maybe quicker if you have some bigger tires on the back um, or, you know, maybe up to 4.7. But anyways, 4.5 seconds, zero to 60. Speedometer goes up to 180. I don't know the exact top speed of the Scat Pack. Um, I do know that, uh, you know, the top speed of the, the Hellcat goes almost up to 200, so this probably goes up to you know 180, 170. I'm not sure on the exact numbers on that. But um, base price of the Scat Pack, so that doesn't include the Shaker Hood because that's technically a package on this car. The base price of the Scat Pack is 37,995. Now this was in 2017. I think the price has gone up just a little bit for 2018 models, but they include more features as well. So standard equipment with the Scat Pack, you have high performance suspension, active exhaust, four piston Brembo brakes, rain brake support, keyless entry and go. So using the Dodge key, you can enter the vehicle, click the button to uh, lock it, and then underneath the handle when you pull on it and unlocks it, and you just use this key, keep it in your pocket, push to start that's standard on the scat pack you know a lot of other stuff uh, apple carplay compatible etc half the stuff i don't even use six premium speakers i think it's 296 watt amplifier a power driver's seat and then four-way lumbar support so that's all standard and you can go through the list on the website if you want now i'm going to go over the optional equipment that this car came with now the first option this automobile came with is the scat pack shaker package now what that adds to this vehicle is a heated steering wheel it adds power tilt and telescoping um, it's a leather performance steering wheel as well and you also get a satin black fuel door you get a gloss black grill um, you get uh, the 245 tires in the back now of course the previous owner like I said made it 275 you get the shaker hood by Mopar that's probably the coolest feature you get the shaker mounted badges so inside the vehicle you have shaker badges that's pretty cool as well you have uh, the shaker intake, uh, shaker graphics, um, that's pretty much it, and performance steering as well. So it adds a little bit. That feature is about $4,800, so it's not cheap by any means, but for me, it was something I really wanted. This also has the technology group, which adds a little bit over 1000 onto the base MSRP, adds automatic high beam, adds rain-sensitive windshield wipers, it adds a forward collision warning, and adaptive speed cruise control. Now mine is the automatic transmission, so it will actually slow down and speed up the car whenever your uh, cruise control is on. It's a cool feature. I think pretty cheap for what you get. Then you have the Scat Pack Appearance Group, which adds the Bumblebee Stripe to the rear. It adds high intensity discharge headlamps and it, de it deletes the stripe um, up the on the top of your car, which sometimes comes with the Scat Pack. That is $1,395. Then you have the power sunroof, which is $1,195. Then you have the Torque Flight 8-speed automatic transmission, which is a ZF transmission. It's probably the fastest transmission out on the market today. Um, it's not dual clutch, but its shifts are just amazingly quick. Um, I love the automatic transmission on this car. And that adds the paddle shifters that you might see on here. They're located right there. And that costs $1,500. Uh, the last thing is 20-inch by 9-inch hyper black forged aluminum wheels. Those are beautiful. They look amazing. And that was $1,095. So the total MSRP of this car after all those packages was $51,860. So this car definitely is not cheap. Now, after talking about the base MSRP at $51,860, of course, I didn't pay that price. I want to tell you exactly what I paid for this car. Like I said, I got this a year old. This is a 2017. It has 15,000 miles on it when I purchased it. This car car cost me before tax 
$35,000. Now, before you start giving me financial advice or tell me I overpaid for this car or whatever comment you might have, um, I actually know the market price of this car very well because I had actively been looking for the Dodge Challenger for about two or three months before I ended up purchasing it. Um, I had looked at a lot of different models, specifically with the shaker hood and of course the scat pack trim with the 6.4 liter engine. Um, I had looked at that for about two, three months, so I had looked at a lot of different prices and I had determined that 35,000 was a very fair price for this car, especially because all the other models I looked at were located far out of state. I had to get it shipped and that cost additional money, which would have put me over the $35,000 mark. So with this amount of miles and with the amount of trim packages that it came with, uh, which the other models I looked at didn't have, in my state, this was probably one of the best deals. Uh, I was lucky enough that the guy was located in Idaho. He ended up driving it down to Utah and that really helped me a lot sh save on shipping, et cetera. And I got to meet the guy in person. He was very cool. He's taking care of this car very well. So that's how uh, you know I knew that I was getting into a car that uh, wouldn't give me any issues was because the previous owner owned it very well and he took good care of it. And so um, that's why I was comfortable getting this automobile, but it had been a two to three month search and there was probably hundreds of thousands of cars that I looked at in that uh, time period and this was the car that I found. So I'm very happy with my decision and I wanted to bring you all that information. So I know it has been a very long video, but I hope I have answered a lot of your questions. But if you do have any outstanding ones, please leave them in the comments below. I really appreciate supportive feedback that you guys have provided. And as always, continue to like, share, and subscribe, and find me on Instagram at Shwayze underscore. There are some future videos that I will be releasing on this car, specifically why I chose the Scat Pack over, say, you know, a TA, or maybe even up to a Hellcat, or why I didn't just go for the 5.7 liter. Um, and I'll also talk about why I decided to finance this car over leasing it. So uh, with that, I hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you all so much for watching. I will catch you all at the next video. Take care.